Duncan asking for it, and again, she scores. Jaja, again, trying to keep her team within this fight. She looks so determined. Carlos winds oh. up again. Wow. Such an amazing tackle. Michelle oh. Gumaba. Wow, that was beautiful. Because for this. Yes. Oh, like the execution of this combination play. The quest for the first ever champion of the first and only professional volleyball league in the country is down to the last two or three days as 10 teams have been whittled down to the last two standing. And day 25 and match number 52 will officially be game number one of the finals between the number one ranked Cream Line Cool Smashers versus the number two ranked Cherry Digo crossovers as the PCV Social, Civic, and Cultural Center in Pacaray, Locos Norte continues to play host for the highly anticipated showdown of the superstars live here on One Sports and One Sports Plus. Good afternoon, Philippines. Thank you very much for joining us for our live and exclusive coverage. Boog Gonzalez together with Neil Flores. We welcome Neil to his very first PVL finals but uh, Neil in all seriousness these two teams without the first toss without the first serve have already made history by being the first finalists of this professional iteration of the PBL I just feel that both of these teams have been destined to meet each other here in the finals it is a match made in heaven as the defending champions Lockhorns with the only team that has managed to beat them so far in this tournament the stakes are higher than ever, right? so may the best team win. And uh, you see Gemma Galanza and the rest of the Creamline Cool Smashers, they're regular customers in the championship round, while the newcomers, Miley Paat and the rest of Cherry Tigo, will be the first timers here in the finals. All right, two questions for you, Neil, as we go back to this one and only matchup that Cherry Tigo won. First is what happened in the game, and after you break down what happened in that game, in, which was won by Cherry Tigo in four sets, Tell me, how does that impact the finals, especially game number one? What can the two teams take away from that uh, matchup? Well, this was the game changer and turning point for the Cherry Eagle crossovers. Again, like I said earlier, they were the only team to beat the Cream Line Cool Smashers in that pre pre-elimination round. They suffered two losses from the lower seeded teams, but when they found that solid seven on the floor, mm. it was no looking back for the crossovers. You see the best players in that specific match, Jaja Santiago with 20 points, Eliza Valdez with 16 points, and it was Cherry Tigo who ended the Cream Line Pool Smashers 25 game winning streak. But for Cream Line, after that loss, they also never looked back as they took all of the games after that. Right after this game and this match, July 30, 2021 was played in an almost two hours, an hour and 54. And for Cherry Tigo, as Neil pointed out, nagtuloy-tuloy ang kanilang panalo. They've won six of their last seven. The only loss, of course, that they that they suffered was game one in the semifinals. Both these two teams' road going into the finals was not easy. Magkaiba, pero they were both not easy. Let's start with the Cream Line Cool Smashers or coming from an emphatic uh, game to win in three sets. Now, the Green Line Cool Smashers had three straight five setters prior to that uh, game, Neil. This may have been three sets, but it wasn't an easy three sets for Cream Line. And naubusa ng konte sa dulo etong uh, Petrogas Angels. Yeah, after that tight five set victory of the Cream Line Cool Smashers in game one, they just wore down the Petrogas Angels in game two. They had to battle from behind right. nung sets one and two, and that was also the point where the championship experience kicked in for the Cool right. Smashers. They went into overdrive really and scattered a lot of their points from their offense from all angles and they capitalized on the miscues of the Gaz Angels. They edged them out in the blocking department and also in aces. 
And like what you said, it wasn't an easy road for both of these teams. They had a lot of good challengers along the way, but we're here and they're ready to battle it out for the first crown of the PBL Open Conference. They limited Myla Pablo also in this match to only three points after exploding the previous match in game number one. This one was played in an hour and 25 minutes. It hasn't been easy for Creamline, but along the way, they've also discovered some gems. You know, they've had two pickups, major pickups for this season. Of course, Pangs Panaga is one, very productive. But this is the girl that obviously has exploded for uh, Coach Tai. She has proven to be the biggest difference maker in Dreamline's campaign this conference. Dahate, she would come off of the bench, but during the times that some of the mainstays of the Cool Smashers were having a hard time getting their game going, Thoughts Carlos was always up for that challenge, averaging 22 points per game or 5.5 points per set. Right. And that says a lot about the talent of this player on your screen. And they need all the help that they could get from that bench when she was coming off the bench. As I said, three straight five setters, four in the tournament, the most for uh, for any team here in the tournament this year, but all in wins. So, pagdating sa five setters, you don't like going up against Creamline because their experience and their bench and their superstars come to play, especially in the fifth set. But there are other key players uh, that you want to focus your attention on. Let's start with Gemma Galanza. Who, kumbaga, kapalitan ni Tots Carlos dito. She comes off the bench. She started for Creamline at the start of the season. And then Tots Carlos and uh, Gemma have played uh, kumbaga, musical chairs in terms of that starting lineup. There were some times na medyo on and off si Gemma Galanza, but in their previous game, she was the number two scorer for Creamline. Tots had 22, Gemma Galanza had 12. But aside from that, napakalaking contributions ang naibibigay ni Gemma Galanza on the floor defense with an 82% efficiency in digging and 56% in receiving, it opens up a lot of opportunities for Gia Morado to set up her teammate. Former finals MVP, so we know what she can do. Former MVP in the PVL. Had a little bit of issues with her right knee, but seems to be 100% going into the finals. But this engine runs and is centered on one girl, and it's the number one setter of the league. Gia Morado is actually the number one setter after the elimination right. round and you can expect her to really confuse the blockers of Cherry Tigo in today's game with a triple threat that she has in the wings with Galanza, Carlos, and Valdez. You, you can expect a lot of excellent plays from this girl on your screen. Yeah, she is the engine of uh, this uh, championship team. They're looking for their very first championship as professionals. The Creamline Cool Smashers, number one ranked team here in the finals. Okay, let's talk about the number two ranked team who went through a different route in the semifinals, went all the way till game three and come from behind uh, in the series and even in certain points of game number two and game number three, talagang bumalik sila uh, and became clutch towards the end of sets two and three of both games two and three kneel in that series. This was the fourth straight meeting of the Cherry Ego crossovers against the Choco Mucha Flying Titans. And they just really showed how much they wanted it more. And they made the most out of the breaks that they got in those um, sets. And just imagine, they were the better team and had the upper hand in almost all the departments. Right. It was a reverse sweep. Right. Medyo natakot sila when they lost that game one, but they came back stronger in game number two and game number three. You take a look at the numbers. 44 attacks against the 37, and they capitalized on the heavy serves of Shaya Adorador, mm -hmm. Mylene Paat, to edge out the Flying Titans 9-4. to four. Two teams that never went beyond three sets in those uh, four games that they met each other. And credit going to Cherry Tigo, they improved as the series went on. 24 errors in the first, 22 in the second, and in game three, they limited themselves to only 18 errors. And again, out attack. Etong Choco Mucho flying Titans. All right, we move on to their setter, uh, Jasmine Nabor, who has even missed a couple of games here in the PBL. Remember, Cherry Tigo was looking for not just a lineup, but an actual setter who, you know, who would work with their lineup and with their superstars, but they seem to have settled now with Jasmine Neal. Yeah, she was huge in the in the entire series. Her setting in big situations were in, was near flawless. She had a couple of games na medyo inconsistent in sets with Jaja Santiago, but in game three, she dished out 28 excellent sets yeah. in a three-set match against 
Choco Mucho and Jaja had her averages back. Right. 15 out of 27, that's a whopping 56% efficiency. And that's the number that they will look into coming into the, today's game against the Pool Smashers. And Din Din also had 13 out of 36 attempts. Both efficiency markers above the average of the Santiago sisters. 30, uh, 28 excellent sets in this game. And just to go back to that matchup against Creamline, which they won, she had 31 excellent sets in that matchup. So she will be key. But there will be other X factors here, Neil. And uh, the wings will be very important. Shaya Adorador is one of them. Her serving, her digging, and her attacking is going to be crucial. Yeah, malaking tulong ito si Shaya Adorador. You might not hear a lot of power hits from her, but she has a different game style compared to the Santiago sisters. She's very smart in choosing her angles. She uses a lot of top spin in identifying the holes of the defense of their opponents. And also on your screen, Mylene Paat. She had a hard time in the service reception, pero dito mo rin may kita yung adjustments ng coaching staff. They actually hid her in right. some of the rotation so that she can focus on her attacks from the back row. It, it was effective against Choco Mucho. You and I did that game number one. Ay inatake nila yung uh, receive dito si Mylene Paat. But to her credit, she also recovered in game number two and had 19 digs also. Played very well on defense. Nagkakapalitan sila minsan, Neil, ng position in terms of outside and opposite hitter. Itong si Shaya at si Mylene. So they're serving. It's going to be important. They're digging and receiving. And as Neil pointed out, they're attacking even if they attack very differently for Cherry Tigo. This is also going to boil down to the queens. The queens of volleyball, the queens of the PVL, and not uh, uh, you know, uh, coincidentally, two players who've had international experience, Neil, for Eliza Valdez and of course, Jaja Santiago. They have long carried the banner of Philippine volleyball in the international seas. Both of them played as imports in their respective countries and club teams. And we don't have just one queen here in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. We have two in Eliza Valdez and Jaja Santiago. And they go head-to-head -head in their first finals appearance together. And you look, take a look at the numbers. Eliza having more points from the attacks, but Jaja Santiago having more on the defensive end of her game. At naglalaban niyan sa MVP, uh, Sigurado. They've both be, been uh, MVPs and final MVPs in different tournaments here in the V-League iteration para kay Jaja and of course Eliza Valdez uh, in the PVL iteration. But now we're looking for the very first one here in the professional version of your Premier Volleyball League. Jaja Santiago and the Cherry Tigo crossovers. The newcomers and the number two ranked team going up against the Creamline Cool Smashers, the number one ranked team. It is game number one when we return here on One Sport.
Talk Sports and One Sports Plus. You're looking at uh, the teams warming up at the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Bacaray, Locos Norte. Now, just a little clarification. There is an, a, a uniform issue apparently uh, right now at the venue and it might be on the side. We're, uh, we have unconfirmed reports that might be on the side of the Cherry Tigo crossover sneal. So this is the cause of the delay that uh, we're experiencing right now. This is for the sake of the audience. Um, uh, as you see, Eliza Valdez and the rest of the Creamline Cool Smashers still kind of going through another round of warm warm-ups just to stay uh, activated prior to game number one. Anyway, Boom Gonzalez with Neil Flores. Um, we'll have Neil talk after we listen to Eliza Valdez. We were able to get her words prior to game number one. Let's listen in. we have to remind ourselves kung bakit kami andito and we have each other we have our teammates we have our coaching staff to always to remind us to stay happy and to be uh, with each other i think we were surviving we're surviving in this bubble because of each other then but we have so much we have limited time also to prepare and to adjust but definitely one of the things na nag-focus kami is the floor defense kasi madami talagang attackers ang charity go but aside from that I think today we're just really going to play and listen to our coaches. Liza Valdez and the rest of Green Line Cool Smashers had a day to rest, an extra day to rest and recover and scout. Okay, your thoughts on what uh, Eliza said, Neil? Well, Eliza was limited to nine markers in their previous right. game. So she's expected to bring the fire today with so much championship experience, with all of her accolades. All eyes will also be on Eliza. Pero ang maganda dyan, marami pa siyang katulong. It's not just her. Mm. Again, Tots Carlos having 22 big points in that previous game. You can see how deep the bench of Green Line. But you know, pag nagkatiktikan, alam mo maaasahan, for the girl na may baon baon na 207 points coming into game number one. She's averaging close to 19, a shade under 19 points with 17 aces in her pocket, but 29 service errors so far in the tournament. That's a big number for Eliza Valdez. Now, let's listen in to Jasmine Nabor and what her thoughts are prior to game number one uh, of the finals. Let's listen in. dun sa last two games namin kasi syempre di ba talo kami nung first game kumbaga hindi kami napanghinaan ng loob kumbaga mas nabus pa yung moral namin para mapanalo namin yung second game namin and syempre yung last game namin kahapon tapos kitang kita na pinaghirapan talaga namin yung panalo kahapon and lahat ng sinakripisyo namin binuhos talaga namin kahapon sa game lahat naman ng teams inaasam na maka tungtong sa championship tapos makuha yung championship ma syempre um, siguro masasabi ko pati bayan na lang ng loob ngayon kasi lahat naman nagsasakripisyo sa every training every games yung paghihirap ng bawat team tapos um, yung championship ngayon paghihirapan talaga namin and kakapitan namin yung isa't isa Jasmine Amor the setter for the Cherry Tigo crossovers She's super essential because you mentioned in game number one and number two of the semifinals how she didn't have a perfect connection with Jaja Santiago, something that they corrected in game number three after apparently a lengthy conversation the night before. Nakausap ko si Jaja at si Dindin kagabi kami ni Mela Tunay and sinabi, nila, sinabi ni Jaja that they made sure that game number three connection sila. Yeah, she can bring so much to the table and we all know that she's also capable of getting a couple of points from her attacks. She right. used to be a spiker. Correct. Kaya hindi tayo magugulat kung magkaroon siya ng mga one-two plays on the attack. So, Jasmine Abor, again, she has to continue that connection with the Santiago sisters and also get the other attackers involved. Kasi, sure ako, babantayan at babantayan ng cream line yung Santiago sisters. So, it's in her hands on how she will pull the strings for the offense of the crossovers. The other thing here is, again, she will be up against one of her idols, you know, si Gia Morado. Now, before, she's already gone up with, uh, against her. But this time, you you would want, if you're a fan of Cherry Tigo, that, yes, you respect her, but you're not in awe of Gia anymore. I know that's tough because Gia just has that effect on a lot of these setters right now. But you got to be uh, on your game if you want to activate 
the sisters today, and of course, Shaya Dorador and Mylene Paat for Cherry Tigo. Okay, we'll take a break, and then hopefully, when we come back, we can finally get game number one going for the finals of your Premier Volleyball League.
did this fight. He looks so determined. Carlos winds oh. up again. Wow. Such an amazing back. Michelle oh. Gumaba. Wow, that was beautiful. Here comes Valdez. Yeah. I like the execution of this combination play. Back here on One Sports and One Sports Plus, we are finally ready for game number one of the best of three series between the Creamline Cool Smashers and the Cherry Tigo crossovers. Let's go to the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in Ilocos Norte. And now our national referees for game one. First referee, Luper Pajarillo. Second referee is Mark Santos. And now let's meet the starters first for the Cherry Tico crossovers. Middle blocker from the National University, number three, team captain, Chanda Santiago. Center also from NU, number four, Jasmine Nabor. Opposite hitter from Addison University, number seven, Mylene Paz. Middle blocker from the University of Santa Tomas, number 10, Mike Ortiz. Outside swiper from the University of the East, number 11, Shaya Adorador. Outside swiper from NU, number 16, Dinde Santiago Mandaba. And a starting hitter from the Far Eastern University, number 23, Bunding Durandes. Head coach for Jerry Tigo is Aaron Villain. And now the starters for the Creamline Cool Smashers. Outside Spider from the Ateneo de Manila University, number two, team captain Eliza Valdez. Middle blocker from the National University, number five, Risa Sato. Middle blocker from the College of St. Vidio, number six, Jeanette Panaga. Center from Ateneo, number 12, Chia Morado. Outside Spider from Addison University, number 15, Gemma Galanta. Let's check out the starting lineup for the Cherry Tigo crossovers. No surprises there. Michael Ortiz, even if she doesn't finish the last two matches, as Rachel Ostero has uh, filled up that lineup, she will always start para que Cochero and Venez. And I don't think we'll see any surprises also from. Uh, the Creamline Cool Smashers, as Carlos or Tots Carlos has taken over already in the last few games in the starting lineup. And then we'll, the great thing here, as Mosey mentioned yesterday, is the in game adjustments. But before we get to game number one, before we get started, Neil, I want to ask you this delay, how does that affect either team, you know, when there's a cause for delay? Well, there are a lot of extra warm ups that are being done on the side while you wait for the other team, other team's uniform to arrive. But again, it will boil down to whoever is conditioned more, not just physically, but also mentally. First attack coming from Maimin Pat. Delayed by the block touch for Chaja Adorador. Do we expect a lot of long rallies here? Definitely, I would expect quality rallies. Hindi lang mo tapos team. Ilang mahaba pero quality ones. Balik kay Tots. And Tots will score the first point of the first championship series of the professional iteration. She has been spectacular, especially in the semifinal series. Alam naman natin, it's Michelle Gumaba ang nagsa start for Green Line. But when she exploded for uh, the production for the Cool Smasher, she got her position in the starting six. But I would say that these two teams are evenly matched in terms of team composition and weakness of bench. There is also no doubt that these are the two best attacking teams yes. in the league. And with that being said, the showdown of the triple powers of Cherry Tigo in the Santiago Sisters and Paat will be interesting against the Cerberus of Carlos Valdez and Galanda. Spike of the set brought to you by Duncan. We also don't have a shortage of superstars uh, in this matchup as 
Adorador gets us going for this rally. One off. Thoughts again on the other side, two points right away. The two players who have really starred in the semifinals. 22 points for Cream Lines, Tots Carlos. And then Tintin Santiago, who's averaging 17 points in the semifinals, upping her output by almost um, almost five points, uh, Neil, from the elimination round as a rotation error is called on the Cherry Tigo crossovers. Overlap violation called on some of the players from Cherry Tigo, so that point will go to the Queen Smashers. Liza Valdez, as we mentioned, coming into the game, 17 aces, 29 service errors. Error is also going to play a factor here for both teams. These are not the cleanest of teams in terms of errors, number of errors. Banaga is that other player who has become such an impact player, an impact acquisition. Para dito sa cream line. Banaga and Sata combined for six blocks in their previous game and they're looking to add more production from the offense side of things naman to get things going for cream line. Early lead. That sails out. So that is her 30th service error of the tournament. You know, aside from being two strong attacking teams, both are also head-to-head -head in the service department. Pareho silang strong serving teams. So at the end of the day, I would go back to the old saying that defense will win championships. Interesting. Open to Galanza. Down the line. Gemma Galanza finally getting her groove. She was uh, very inconsistent in the early stages of this conference, but she will bring us to the spike of the set brought to you by Dumpy. Maybe it had something to do with that knee also, which she kind of injured midway through the tournament. The number four blocker on your screen, Spang Spanaga. The ball, that's going to be a setting error, according to Lumer Pajarillo. Biggest lead of the match so far at four. The one thing that we did see, though, in the two wins of Cherry Tigo in the semifinals is their ability to come back. Not just from the series, but in sets. They've shown this ability to come back a couple of times against Chocomucho. And even in pressure pack situations, they're very good in out-of-system plays. They would find ways to sneak past the defenders of their opponents. But right now, it's just... A uh, five-point lead for the Cool Smashers. Cherry Tigo still trying to find their initial movement on the court. Thoughts Carlos with another point there as she finds that hole. Sato ready to defend as Cherry Tigo on the offense now. That's four touches. Because it's two for Eliza and Gia. And the fourth touch by, the, uh, by another cream line player. 3 7 is your score. My knee, Paat. That's off the block. And the first technical timeout of the finals. Cream line ahead by five. of the cream.
for this game one team captain of the cream line cool smashers fino malaysa valdez told me na hindi pa tapos sa kanilang journey sa pvl dahil pa simula pa lang ang tunay na laban ngayong finals and she said that one of the big factors why they got here today is because of the adjustments made by their coaching staff and also to her teammates who always stuck to their plan masusukit ba ang corona ng cool smashers on crossovers let's check here in this set one thank you ahit inside a point scored by Tintin Santiago, a girl who has saved them many times and out of system plays here in the semifinals. She has really been consistent talking about Tintin Santiago Mana, but contributing from the production side of things and also in the non scoring skills. She had 10 excellent digs out of 16 attempts, and that's a good sign for Cherry Ego. Na mas tumiti ba yung defense nila, siempre against a strong attacking team also. Two of the best attacking teams are actually the two best coming in well in the elimination round. Dreamline is a good 37% in terms of their success rate. And Cherry Tigo right behind at 35% after the elimination round. So the two best attacking teams of the league. No touch, says Lumer Pajarillo. And a six-point lead now, the biggest of the match so far. I was able to talk to Coach Aaron Velez and sabi niya sa akin that they have to be mindful in lessening their unforced errors. Because uh, one of their advantages is that they have a diverse roster. Again, like what I said in the pregame, they have a deep bench. The players understand their roles and how they can complement one another. If a teammate is struggling, merong isang mag step up um, para makatulong dun sa Cherry Tigo. Sa likod din nila, din din Santiago na naman. Another pipe attack for her. Five will be serving ten. Three points unofficially so far for Tintin Santiago Manabat. Coming from their last two games, 23 errors para sa cream line in a win. 29 for Cherry in a win. Sato is denied. How important is that, the blocking? of uh, Cherry Tigo in this game. It's also important to note that Jaja Santiago and Lisa Sato were teammates in college. So, medyo familiar sila sa style ng isa't isa. And that can be a difference maker coming into today's game. Biggest lead was at six. It's now down to four. Napor. Soft touch by Jaja. Doesn't work. Eliza. Shia. Gia will go to the back to Tots. Dug up by Dindin. Dindin will recover and send it over. Open hand. Alisa again on a faster attack this time. His long rallies so far in his streamline winning. Just identifying her advantage when it comes to hitting it off the hands of the blockers. Siyempre, you, you wouldn't want to challenge the taller um, Jaja Santiago. Jaja again, readjusting in mid-air. This one worked. 7-11. Jaja Santiago comes in averaging 15 points. A total of 180 coming into game number one. She's number three in the league. And to add to that, the good thing about Jaja Santiago is that she's not choosy with the sets given to her. Kahit na medyo alanganin, medyo mata, she will find a way to still adjust and try to score for the crossovers. Which is what happened in games one and two in the semifinals against Choco Mucho. Hindi perfect, ginagawa ng paraan. Nag-adjust sila in game number three. And this six-point lead has been cut now to three and half. Overpass. Oh, inang gigil si Shaya doon. Wasn't in the best position. Siya ng tamang approach then. As they give, give up that error. Bailing out Eliza Valdez's reception error there. Gia Morado. Online to serve. Valdez flies. This one sails out. No, there's a touch. 
Yeah, they get the point. I think Luber, yeah, pointed to uh, to the court of Dreamline. She was discussing with Mark Santos. But Luber already gave them the point. 13-8 is our score. start here of uh, game number one. In-game adjustments would also be crucial for both coaching staff. And dun din magaling sila. It's like a chess match. Na every time may gagawin yung kalaban mo, mag adjust ka din ng rotation. You'll be changing up your strategies. And there is nothing set in stone. You would think that you will use this and then suddenly mag kayo mid-game. Santiago on top of the ball there. You cut the lead down to four. Nabor, Santiago, look at that, over two blockers. Panaga and Valdez, who are, by the way, both in the top ten of blocking. As Shaya Adorador comes in to the finals with 16 aces. Eliza on the other side. Lead us back to five. In the past few games, I've noticed that I've been on the team line of the wing spikers. There would be times that Eliza would be hitting on the opposite side, then Tots Carlos in the open. And that's a luxury for yeah. the cool smashers. Buding. Tindin. Just continuing her stellar performance in that semi-final series. And she's doing this for her daughter, for the for so that because gusto daw maglaro ng volleyball, so sabi niya gusto niya nakikita ng nanay niya na naglalaro ng maganda. So she is inspired here in the semi-finals and into game number one as a loaded serve, courtesy of Jaja Santiago, her 16th ace of the tournament and they want to replicate their performance in that win uh no july 30 they scored a lot from the aces compared to um green line so they were able to take them out of system and out of tempo the reception of cream line nung araw na yun, napaka faulty ano? Nabor, sa likod. oh what a dive there by atienza Alanza rolls it over that spot has been open for Carlos, for Galanza, so they maintain a four-point lead here. You know, for attackers, when they go up for a hit, hindi yan basta-basta bahala na, papaluin ka na lang. There is so much to be considered. There would be a lot of times na sisilip muna sila sa blocker. Right. They would check the defenders in the backcourt right. kung saan yung butas. And that's the time they decide mid-air kung saan nila papapuntahin yung bola. Gia chooses Gemma. Gemma chooses to go for the kill again. This time, off the block, off the right hand of the outside blocker. So far, so good for Green Line 16 11.
Gemma Galanza and the rest of the Cream Line Cool Smashers ahead here by five. Their biggest was six. Baika. And a nice, quick slide play. That's the perfect set for Michael Ortiz in that previous game. Diba, nakita natin. Medyo nag-struggle sila in finding that perfect set on the running, but that was spot on for Jasmine Abor. Excellent set. Not too high, not too long. As Marion Buitre comes in to serve, 12, serving 16. Dots. Carlos, the revelation here. Well, we always knew that she was talented. We always knew that she had power. But the coaching staff of Creamline, as Eliza mentioned, has tweaked a few things here and there on the technique of Tots Carlos. And then you play with some champions. I'm sure, Neil, you know this. It, it just makes you a better player, seeing greatness every day, playing, uh, practicing with you. Gatlin, the number one option for the Cool Smashers, and she's just 22 years old, so a bright a career ahead of Fox Cardo. But in Sahani, I'm a bad hit on a cream line. Cherry Digo hasn't gotten a consistent rhythm. Every now and then, they would get a couple of hits, but nothing consistent yet. So the lead is back to six. And now, a service ace. That is only her fourth of the tournament. 19-12 is the score. What is your assessment of Cherry Eagle here? Well, come in, coming into this ball game, for me, I thought that Cherry Eagle had that slight edge in terms of mindset coming to the finals. Bakit? Because again, they were the only team to beat Dreamline in the elimination round. And the fact that you know that you are capable in beating the number one team in this league, you know that you can do it again. But right now, it's a little bit uh, tentative for the Cherry Eagle crossovers. Overpass by Budding Durantes to give Creamline their biggest lead of the match at seven. And Gia Morado takes care of business there. Twenty twelve. Check that. An eight point lead. Sato still in game number one, knowing when she's on camera. <laughs> Atienza, sorry, De Jesus coming in with that dig. Dindin will try again. Eliza, De Jesus sets it up for Galanza. Bababa. Scrambling on the play for the cool smashers. And now it has been Dindin Santiago Manabat contributing to the cause of Cherry Eagle. We saw a couple of hits from Jaja Santiago, but so far, if they want to catch up, in this seven-point lead, kailangan magkaroon sila ng consecutive string of points. Yeah, yeah. Some free points from the service area wouldn't hurt. Galanza gets it back. Bad with the get. Adorador rolls it. Carlos underneath the ball. And a hitting error from Tots Carlos gives a little bit of a chance here for Cherry Digo. Two straight points to cut the lead down to six. Shaya Adorador has to really note that there are defenders for those um, cut shots or top spin hits. Kaya kailangan niya dagdagan ng konti pang power if she wants to challenge the defenders Woo! of the two smashers. But with that unforced error, uh, this lead will go back to seven. That is the second service error for Dindin in this game. She's one of the better servers, actually. When you talk about serving, the mga top servers are dito rin sa, sa match na to. Baika. Great 
great pickup there by Gemma. Valdez flies, and nobody home. Cream line now, extending the lead again to eight. Having an easy time converting of the transition plays because of their digging. They don't have the height advantage against the crossovers, but they make up for it down the floor. Justin Dorog is in to receive. Another first ball issue there. And Cherry Eagle now staring at the biggest lead of the match. Nine points and Dreamline is two points away from taking set number one. Crossovers just really need to settle down. Kumalmamuna sila and get that perfect receive going. Kailangan nila maihatid yung bola kay Jasmine Nabor so she can make good decisions when it comes to the offense of Cherry Tigo. Another faulty first ball. Chance again for Creamline. Eliza finds a spot. She knew there was an opening behind. This is exactly what Neil was talking about. The nuances and the mechanics prior to the approach. They go to hard attacks. They go to drop shots. And they have been identifying a lot of loopholes in the defense of Cherry Eagle. But again, ang pinakimportante talaga is the reception. Did it scavenging for a point. Clean hit from the back row. Did it Santiago Manabat. Yan yung mga ad-lib ni Jasmine Abore na there are players na parang itaas mo ako bahala. Ganun si Dindin. Saving one set point. Oh! And the cream line cool smashers, the number one ranked team, seemingly easily takes set number one of game number one for the championship of the Premier Volleyball League 25 15. We're back for more of game number one of the finals between Cream Line and Cherry Tigo. This is your Premier Volleyball League set one. Done right away. And Cream Line looking like a fresh team with that one day break. They seem to have their spring. Uh, they seem to be focused. They seem to be sharp. And that score reflected it 25 15. 
It was an organized start of this final series for Dreamline. They were passing well, they were defending well, they were converting in transition plays. That's why they got that first set. For Cherry Tigo, the other players need to rack up a decent amount of points and share the load mm. in scoring with the Santiago sisters if they want to come back in the second set. Well, they've done it before. As Cherry Tigo registering seven unforced errors. But look at the attack department. 15 to 8. And that's surprising for me because we all know the caliber of the spikers of Cherry Tigo. Sabi ko nga, they're the two best attacking teams. And if we were to choose one team to challenge them in that department, yung crossovers yon. Yep, you're right. Team matchup brought to you by Ribisco. Hello and good afternoon again, Philippines. Boom Gonzalez, Neil Flores. Ait Sai is inside the PCV Social Civic and Cultural Center in the Locos Norte. Well, Cherry Tigo has shown the ability to come back. They've done it before. Let's see how they start off in set number two. A spot slams the door on Todd Carlos. Better start for the crossover. And just by looking at the stat sheet, they know that Todd Carlos will be their primary option for offense. So when you get to double up against that attack, mas matasing chances na convert ka. By my unofficial count, that's their third service, sorry, fourth service error. Giving away three points to a team that's already ahead is not ideal. Para dito sa Cherry, Tigo. 19 point average for Eliza Valdez. Pot. Back to back errors for the cross one service error, the other attacking error. Obviously, this is the game plan of the Cool Smashers. They want to disrupt the passes of Cherry Tigo para hindi magkaroon ng opportunity si Jaja Santiago to go up for that quick attack. And another one, another disruption. All from loaded serves. Banaga in the middle puts it away. Green line is humming. So far, so good for the Green Snatchers. Spike of the set brought to you by Duncan. Banaga averaging seven points a game. Now with 80 coming into the second set. Total points. She had 10 in their previous game. The third best scorer for the Bulls Smashers. Oh, nice dig there by Eliza of a Jaja attack. Cherry gets it back. Shia. Good reverse set for Jasmine Abor, getting Jaja Santiago in that fake, confusing the blockers of Cream Line and open up, opening up a huge hole for Shia Adorador to get that kill. As I said, six of the top ten servers are in this matchup in game number one of the finals, including Shia Adorador, who is at number three just behind Jaja and Dindin in terms of the number of aces. Broken play na. Naka-score pa itong si Tons Carlos as you look at the digs on your screens in the favor of Greenline. Look at this. Tons Carlos wasn't in the best position, but she just used pure force to get it off the hands of Dindin Santiago Manabat. She has a lot of it. Six aces for Max Panaga after that one. Now they're challenging the reception of Chaya Adorador. This is looking like the reverse of their elimination matchup. Yeah, huh? but for, uh, Chaya is a steady um, receiver. 18 out oh, of yeah. 35 in their previous game. That's a 55, 51% um, average. So if you get to break her game, but that tempo for from Jaja Santiago, that has been the set that I have been waiting for. Perfect, you know? And may halong galit yung, yung, yung hampas ng bola. Look at that, a little bit of frustration being uh, vented out on that ball. And you see it in her face too. That's a good serve. And a chance for Cherry Tigo. They're only down by two. Ostero, by the way, is in the match now. 
as a violation on the green line side. So Ostero has been that spark off the bench for Coach Aaron Velez in the semifinals. And this is how they complement one another. If Ortiz is not having um, a good day, you have Ostero. But in that last sequence, Gemma Galanza touched the net. So that point will be for the Cherry Eagle crossovers. Gemma gets it back, and it's sent back. Now, what we, if you're a Cherry Tigo fan, what you want to see is make one thing three, four, five points na dire diretso kasi di pa, di pa tayo nakakita ng talagang run meal para dito sa Cherry. And Cherry Tigo knows that Morado will really try her best to confuse their blocker so she can open a lot of opportunities for their main attackers to score. So Jaja Santiago and Ostero has to get their timing on point. Crucial yung magiging lateral movement nila from left to right. Look at that. I don't know if that was a miss hit or a cut shot. You, you tell me. Let's look at this. Oh, she just cuts it. Also looked like a miss hit. <laughs> Binitawa na nga yun ng isang blocker ng Cherry Tigo, but she still scored. Better receive. That is wide though. Oh, but it, somebody touched. A check. I think it caught the line. It caught the line, okay. So again, the CSP standout with another instant impact off the bench for coach Aaron Velez. But it came from a really good receive though. Return to center. And Jerry Tigo gets the lead. 7-6 to six, and Ostero has been a fire starter. It's the same game plan for the crossovers. They try to disrupt the reception of the Cool Smasher so that Morado can be forced to go to Gemma Galanza or Tots Carlos. And if that happens, the double block will most probably be ready to defend. Not that time, says Gemma Galanza. Swinging hard against the block of Justin Amor. Parang single block na lang yun. I think Sato was able to pull one blocker away. Galanza averaging 10.4 points coming into the finals. Another botched play. Gia, Eliza. Oh, nobody taking the second ball. And the second ball would always be the responsibility of the center unless we reach an angulo. But we enter our technical timeout with green line. Na may kalamangan ng isa. <clears throat> For team captain of the Cherry Tigo crossovers, Jaja Sinsago said that yesterday's win was mainly brought out of their composure, support, dahil controlado ang kanilang emotion, kalmado sila, and mentally prepared sila. That is why they have more advantage. Singa natin si Setu if they have the same focus like yesterday's game. Yan ang kakailangan nila ay some composure here. 8-8. And she said she was very emotional in the semifinals as you've seen. But she said she felt it's the right kind of emotion. It's not, you know, a negative emotion of frustration and negativity. 
just pure, pure passion yeah. at this stage of competition. They've been through a lot, just imagine. It was a long and winding road for both of these teams, but now they're here in the final round of our competition. They've played 41 sets so far in the tournament, while Creamline has played 44 sets. That's a good attack and a good approach from the former UE standout. Chago sisters had a combined 33 point production in that ball game. Here's a spike of the set brought to you by Duncan. I was about to say, the Santiago sisters had 33 points, and the rest of the team combined for roughly 18. Taken by Dindin. Shia adjusts. Kalanza with a dig. Isa again, cross court. Dindin in the middle. And Panaka scrapes the net. So another lead here by Cherry Eagle. They have to keep their composure because again, they have a good rotation in this one with Jaja Santiago in the front line and Shaya Adorador waiting in the wings. Ostero on your screens. Averaging three points, a match, a little long, well, a lot, actually. Very strong for Astero. Giving away another three point. Gia Morado is number four in terms of serving here in the league. Jaja with a perfect approach. Isayin sa mga nadagdag sa playbook ni Jaja, that perfect short back running hit. If it's, it looks perfect. And then the pounding the pavement on the run and gun. She loves it too. More competitive second set here. Is there a hit by one? Nice pickup by Nabor. Bad. Oh, that's too low. Dalawang set si Paat coming from that broken play. Yes, now back service line. It's good serve. With a good first ball by Adorador. Pinabawe si Paat sa kabila, but nasarhan ng pinto. The duo of Panaga and Todd Carlos just teaming up against that attack of Paat. That's the second service error for Eliza Valdez, also the second of the team. So far, Cherry has four, as we mentioned earlier. That's the official count for the service errors for Eliza. That is her 31st of the season. And then, siguro yung kaparehas or yung similarity between the two of them. They make a couple of mistakes from the service line, and it's all about minimizing these three points. Shia taking her time. Wow, I thought that would wrap in, drop in. She thought so too, but it's wide. But she loves targeting that line. You can see it. If you've been watching, she always goes for that line. This time, it's just an inch out, maybe even touching the line. But that's from our angle, the TV angle, very different. This one definitely in, with a lot of space to play. Nine out of the ten sets probably given to Jaja Santiago, untouched by the blockers. That's beautiful. Sabihan if she was able to get a championship in Japan, why not in the Philippines? And then a service ace for Jaja, that is 17. Serve from Jaja Santiago. Mas ma for me, ha, mas mahirap talaga receive in ang float serve compared to jump serves. Right. 
because you have to read kung saan bababa yung bola. Nine points already for Jaja Santiago. And a one-point lead. Chance to make it two. They open up the Dindin. This one, though. Greenlight winning out that rally, that exchange. Now the second set that we're seeing right now. And I was about to say, Neil, we were thinking the same way. This is what we expected from these two teams. This is the kind of match that we knew they were capable of. Service error number three. With a one-point lead, back-to-back -back service errors. Panglima. Nagpapalitan lang yung dalawang kubunan with their service errors. Both coaching staff not happy <laughs> with what they're seeing. Dorog. Underhand to Din Din. That's a good reaction by Sato. Palikay din din. Bumalik ang bola sa Cherry. Shia. Gia. Eliza. One step. Din din ad libbing. And gets the point. Good angle for Din din Santiago. Identifying that line from the zone one area. We enter the technical time. This time, Cherry ahead by one. Back with you here on One Sports and One Sports Plus for game number one of the finals between Cherry and Creamline. Cherry Tigo joust at the net. Somebody touched the net. I believe it is a crossover player. I think that was Estero or, or maybe the board. He tried to block that one. Let's take a look at this replay. Parang dalawa pa nga ata sila nakahawak sa net. But it only counts as one error, so yeah. that's uh, that's okay. One point for Green Line. Time 16 all. It's too high. Another point for Green Line. 17-16. Two shots at the shot for Adorador. It worked in their previous game against Chocomucho, but I don't think that will work against Greenline because they have really good defenders in the backcourt. And if you give them soft touches, expect a forceful attack from the Bulls On the counter, I know. Sato serving still. Did it from the middle. That's out. That's more like it. That's the power that we, we are looking for. From Cherry Eagle, and all the other players have to follow suit. Well, by the way, if you missed it, Pe uh, Petrogas winning in four sets against Chocobucho earlier in the battle for third in their game number one, as Carlos scores here 18 17, and Breyers. Uh, 
uh, have to be sent out to Mandy Madayag earlier who injured her left knee and uh, fell earlier in that, uh, that match. So from us here and your PBL family, our prayers to Mandy and her family and hopefully it won't be too serious. Also playing for, for everybody else. Free game in the final series. Sa lahat na na naglalaro. In the meantime, Chaya targeting the outside arm of Tots Carlos. So we're in nip and tuck here in set number two, 18 all. It's good attack from the right pin. Para kay Eliza Valdez. Morado loves that play. Look at that underhand oh. reverse set to Eliza Valdez. Judge Santiago giving up on that play. And if Eliza Valdez is up against a single blocker, and laki nung vision niya on the court. How tough is that set? It's a good serve. And a chance ball here. 19-18. Gia opens up to Gemma. This is it. A two-point lead and a crucial part of the set, so I feel, I was about to say, Aaron Dennis might call a timeout here, and he does. Santiago and the rest of Cherry Tigo continue to trail here in set number two. Mitch Kumaba has not seen a lot of action after she started. No? What what would be the reasoning for Coach Stein here, in your opinion, Neil? Pareho kasi silang natural opposite ni Tots Carlos. And Tots Carlos has been performing really well for the time. And it's not like Mitch is, you know, not doing well throughout the season. She's averaging 12.2 points a game, even had a 24-point output, you remember? But somewhere along the line, when they needed Tots Carlos, and that was when Gemma Galanza injured her knee, dun, dun talaga parang yeah. nagkaroon ng break ito si Tots Carlos. And, she, and as you always say, Neil, when you're a bench player, you have to take the moment. And that's what Tots did. The speed is only one. Another chance for the joust here. The set. Chance ball for Greenline. That was actually a good save yeah. from Jasmine Abor. But nobody went for the attack. But now it's their chance. Good reaction by Atienza. Gemma Galanza puts it away. As the saying goes, boom. When in doubt, you can just check it out. Gemma Galanza going. A forceful check out though. A lot on that massive swing. 21-19. And Rose Vargas will check in to serve. Talking about players with massive swings. Former FBU standout will start off this rally. For the crossovers, now that you know that Galanza has been going to that check ball you have to close your hands papunta dun sa zone one and probably leave the court cross court for the libero time out cherry tigo
Justin Dora challenged here. And just as I say that, I think they're going to pull her out and put Puding to receive this Rose Vargas serve. Malakit talagang responsibility ni Doremdes in taking charge of the reception and organizing the floor defense, but right now she's struggling. Malamig na malamig. At uh, just couldn't get that received. So this is the biggest lead of this set at four, and it's at the right time for Creamline. C is in. Looking at the attack points, wala talagang problema ang Cherry Tigo when it comes to that department. In nga lang, they're still finding that perfect pass. And that was a Woo! perfect pass from Duremdes. Transitioning to that Jaja Santiago oh. kill, unchallenged at the top of the net. Somebody's gonna get hurt <laughs> with this one. Look at a missile, a rocket. And you see the expression of Jaja there. That's, that's complete frustration now. Iba yung gigil ni Jaja oh. dun sa palo na yun eh. She wants to win so bad. Good save there by Pat. Gia. Si. Dindin. Bumuelo. Uy! Nasa ilalim ng bola. And that's rare for Dindin. Yeah, she was underneath the ball. Bababa yung contact. That will fail out. This is set point number one. Coach Aaron Velez will now have a hole to look at if they don't deny cream line here. No room for error now. Four set points. This time, Pinawian it did it. He made sure na hindi babalik yung bola na yun. Santiago has been fantastic. Like we said, in, in the three games in the semifinals, 19, 17, and 16, for an average of 17.3. That's almost five points from her 12-point average in the elimination. So she got better as the tournament got longer. Right now, they're down by three. Adlib Nenaban. He uses the left hand that time. And this time, Kalanza makes sure and puts away the nail in the coffin for the second set. Cream line cool smashers pulling away in the end and getting a two sets to love lead.
better set two for Cherry Tigo crossovers compared to the set number one, but still not enough. The experience, the togetherness, and the firepower, really, of the Cream Line Cool Smashers um, in full force, Dito, sa game number one, Neil. The Cool Smashers are just in cruise control right now, playing simple volleyball, organized volleyball. They've been defending well, and they've been showering the defense of Cherry Tigo with a lot of powerful attacks. But on looking at the positive light for Cherry Tigo, they still have the Santiago sisters right now on point. Lahat ng right. bolang ibigay yeah. mo kay Jaja right. na mamatay. So the defenders need to focus on giving Jasmine Abor perfect receptions. And as we take a look at the statistics of this ball game, they're tied in attack points, but Cherry Tigo just gave four more errors against the four of the Cool Smashers. So that's 15 in all para dito sa Cherry Tigo. And four is a very good number for the Cool Smashers, who again are also known to have uh, games with a lot of errors. They've had a game that they had 32, they had a game that they had 34. So four in a set, and in a tight set, as we saw that team matchup brought to you by Rubisco, in a tight set, that is very good for the Cool Smashers. Positive takeaways, as Neil said, Santiago sisters are on point, but it's that first ball, the reception of Duremtes Doro. It's got to be better if they want to extend this game number one here at the PCV Social and Civic Center in Ilocos Norte. Boot Gonzalez, Neil Flores, Gia Morado, getting ready to get us started. And exactly what we said is uh, what didn't happen there for Jerry This is not unfamiliar territory for the crossovers. They were all. able not to conduct that reverse sweep against the Choco Mucho Flying Titans, and they can also do that now. But again, um, kailangan talaga makapasa. I may sound like a broken record boom, but dun nagsisimula kasi yung rallies eh. And they give away another point to the Cool Smashers with that missed reception. Really like, it, it really looks like the game number one of Choco Mucho versus Jerry Tigo no semi-finals. Right now, um, Jaja Santiago is the leading scorer for the crossovers with 11. Manabat with 8. On the other hand, for the Cool Smashers, you have Carlos with 10 and Galanza plus Valdez tied at 9 each. Gia Morado. Couple of aces here for Gia Morado, the number four server in the league. He's making it look easy now. Morado with 23 aces in the tournament. At this point, Din Din Santiago Malabat has to help out in the receiving formation in mining path also. Kung mahihirapan yung mga libero ng Cherry Eagle. Nice cross court attack by Din Din. Again, she's the one really uh, successful in her ad libs and those out of system plays. Yeah, that's the lifeline of the cross movers during the times uh, um, break ball ng Ibibi guy. A couple of service errors earlier. This one is a good one. It's out. So much power. You take a look at the spikes of, of Carlos and Gemma Galanza. It's the same strategy. They're brushing it off the right hand of the opposite spiker of Cherry Eagle. Again, kaya kailangan bantayan mo na yun. Don't give the line. Even if you leave the cross court, at least you have a defender waiting there. Ostero. And another broken play for them. Dorog. Paat sends it over. Gia. Gemma. This time it's a little low. Trying to go for that sharp cross for angle. But didn't hit it at the peak of the ball. Green line coming off a game where they had 47 attacks in game two against Petrogas. 44 na man itong uh, Cherry Tigo against uh, Choco Mucho in game number three. Again, as Neil has been saying, 
These are the two best attacking teams. But the attacks today of Cherry Tigo have been few and far in between because of the first ball. Meantime, thoughts continues to swing away here for a three-point lead for the Green Light Bull Smashers. At this point, the Kakata is execution. Eh? They haven't gone to a lot of combination yeah, plays, right. but it's the team who executes better in rallies. Yun yun ng mga punto. Nobody home, and again, that was a good first ball by Dorov. Napor just serving it up for the 6 5 powering Jaja Santiago. Sobrang taas ng porcento right now for Jaja Santiago. Even, rin, eh, no? even if she had three blockers, yes, she still managed to get a point. That's why. Trying to go for that check ball. Mentally, Cherry has to stay together here and stay the course, guys. Right? Down two sets. Six service errors for Cherry Eagle. Trying to calm the teammate and they uh, attempt to get this point. Do you miss uh, Tots' uh, jump serve, though? Yeah. <laughs> but so far, maganda kasi yung floats. Eh. Ganda nung, oh, ganda nung float niya. Eh, pinati natin. Pero it's, she's been so good with the, with her transformation as a float server. But uh, back in the day, back in the day, you know, parang ang tagal na. She would go for the jump serve. Beautiful execution. One reason, din, siguro, kung bakit hindi na siya nag jump serve is nakakapagod din, eh. Sure. With, with the schedule that they have. You really need to conserve your energy. Again, Shia goes to this right side, targeting Galanza. Overset. And that's what I've been saying. Magandang kinalabasan ng defense pattern ng Cherry Tigo. Jema Galanza was forced to hit cross court. Duremdes was there to defend that ball. Let's see what you say. Shia, one thing I like about when Shia serves also, she takes her time, doesn't hurry. And again, goes for that corner. Another chance here for Cherry to take the lead. And they do. Still unchallenged, Jaja Santiago. Ganda no connection, as long as maganda yung unang pasa. They're going to different plays. Jasmine Abor doing a good job in making the middle blockers a free line move. Okay. Ano kaya yung pep talk na napag-usapan nila nung gabi, the night before game three of the semis? Try again. Still goes to Gemma. It's been her strategy. So they get into the technical timeout ahead with two point lead. But it is green line with the two sets to the lead.
for Thoughts Carlos, two-time POG with 21 points last game for this crucial match. They studied and scouted the strengths and weaknesses of their opponent's team in order to create a fitting gameplay. Sabi niya iba talaga yung saya kapag masaya yung puso sa laro and sa teammates kusang lumalabas ang dapat lumabas. Let's see if they will close out this set with a sweep or will the crossovers bounce back. Uh, right now, I bouncing back is on the agenda for Cherry Tigo. They're up by three off a service ace from Shaya Adorador. That is her 17th of the tournament. This time, he's not going to the left side. Her thoughts. It's either thoughts Carlos or Gemma Galanza, the target on the serve for Shaya Adorador. Goes back to Tots, and another misreceived ball. Dug up by Ma, ba, my mean rather. Still a point. Miss hit, ah, no tip. Tip of her fingers and still gets a point. This is the biggest lead of Jerry Tigo in any set. They had a lead earlier in set two. That all 6-5 and all the, that wingspan working in that soft touch. Double substitution for Coach Tai Negrito comes in. Mitch Gumabo is back after a long time. And obviously Negrito will serve. Jaja Santiago ready to defend. As Shaya continues to serve. Sorry, did I say Negrito will serve? Negrito will set, rather. And Shaya will serve. It goes through. Jaja against two defenders. Good pick up there, but they couldn't keep it up or in play. And it's a five point lead. Nabuhay and Nagisig. A Jerry Tigo crossover is here. Jaja Santiago just really taking charge of this ball game. She's on a mission to get her first championship, and it's showing the passion, the hard work. Lumalabas ngayon. And the poise, you know, the passion, the poise. She's composed, not panicking. Parang she always feels she's in it. And right now they are ahead by five. One, 15 points para kay Jaja Santiago so far. That's long and wide. 12-6. Chaya has been serving. Malamig pa si Michelle Gumabaw off the bench. She's good for the confidence of Cherry Tigo. And this is a sick, convincing six-point yeah, lead for right. the crossovers. You're right. They really worked hard for that lead. It's a good point. They forced the action. They forced some errors. And they've received and dug up well. It's in the side of Greenline. Michelle will put it over. Nice dive there by Nabor. Safely on the other side. That's too close. But Kumaba finding a way. Jaja cross court. Sorry, that was Dindin cross court and then Jaja putting it away. Offense to defense. Jaja Santiago was just ready for that regalo. We also credit Dindin Santiago Manaban forcing Kaila Atienza to make that over reception. So a seven, seven point lead, 13 6. Biggest lead that we had in the match was nine, and that belonged to Freeline in set number one. This time, they finally stopped the bleeding. Courtesy of Gemma from the right pin. Mark hitting still for Gemma.
am I gonna hit the same um, strategy going up top in sa mga daliri ng mga blockers niya. Seven serving 13. Oh! Not in position was Dorog. For Gemma Galanza. That is 17 aces in the tournament. Dorog not in the proper position to take that floater. Pudding. De Jesus. That is it. Two straight points for Galanza. One a service ace. Another one on the pipe attack. I think that's the third. Because bago pa siya magserve, meron pang isa from oh, right. the opposite side you're of right. the court. Three consecutive points for Gemma Galanza. Right at the line. Could that sustain it? Salida five. Chacho Santiago will be on deck for this one with a five point lead. Michelle. Nabor. Din Din loads up. Atienza was there. The Grito will bump it to. Eliza sends it to the front line. The board opens up to Dinden, and Dinden puts it away. Wow. <laughs> Dinden just showing her big form in this open conference. Look at that. A clean cross court hit from Dinden Santiago Manabat. And a scorcher for the older sister. Dinden talaga yung nakasira dun sa depensa ng Choco Mucho yes. in the previous games. That Cross court hit. Ten points for Din Din Santiago so far. But this will get credit for this one. Ten will be serving 15. Still midway through set number three. Cherry needs to win, obviously, to extend this one. The knuckle. Knuckleball working for Baldo. <laughs> he was happy. <laughs> Adjustment na lang din yun eh. Or Palikay Dindin. Negrito. Palikay Eliza. Joust. And it goes back to Greenline. Ostero strutting after scoring the 16th point in set number three. Cherry Tigo looking to stay alive. Tennis is score here at set number three. You are watching game number one of the finals between Cream Line Cool Smashers and Cherry Tigo crossovers. Nabor serving. Valdez gets it through the block. It's still a five point deficit, and now that you have Eliza Valdez on the front row, now is the time to score those points. A nice spike of the set brought to you by Duncan. So it's back for Cream Line and back serving two. Out of system, they send it over. Carlos 
Good coverage there. The Ding. The ball will bump it to Tintin on the right pin this time, and even that one works for Santiago Manabat. It must be difficult to find your uh, correct position defending the Santiago sisters. Kadalasan, dyan ka muna sa attack line to anticipate a drop ball, pero kanina pa nga binibigyan sila ng malalakas na palo. So ang tendency, umaatras ngayon yung mga defenders ng team line, and din din Santiago Manabat saw that. What a serve. Gia backtracking. And Eliza still scoring. What a set by Gia. Alam ko, madada pa ano eh. Expect the unexpected from her. Number one setter in the league. Consensus. Ostero waiting. Has a five point lead for Chetty. The thing will do the honors. Ostero in the middle. Oh, confusion. What a save by Cherry. Sorry, by Creamline. Shia. Chance here for Creamline. Back set. Buding Humabol. But we'll just put it up. And that will end up as a Creamline point. The speed is down to four now. Just all over the floor trying to save all the touches that she can get. <laughs> Coach Aaron will call a timeout this time. Biggest lead was seven, Neil. This is down to four now. I like that time out of Coach Aaron. Uh, Coach Tina Salak is trusting her players na kailangan sumigaw ka, nakukunin yung bola because there are times na nakiintayan yung Chelly Ego. Kaya pagdating sa mga transition plays, nag nagiging disorganized yung counter-attack nila. That's a better first ball. Somebody was also shouting, walang doubt. No doubt on that attack, but a, a touch on the net by Galanza. Ooh, they dodged the bullet there, Neil. She scraped it on the way down, or did it hit the antenna? It hit the antenna ah, first before hitting the floor of Cherry Eagle. She's trying to go down the line. So good time out there. Five point lead for Ostero and Cherry Eagle. That's why. Have to take care of that four point lead. Again, the Nationals. Vargas will check in to serve with a heavy handed serve for Cream Line. Yeah, most of the time, pag mga pasok si Rose Vargas, nagkakaroon talaga siya ng instant service ace. On cue. She was a heavy handed attacker back in her FU days. She's still heavy handed even from the service deck. Straight to the libero. That was too high to get that ball na underhand. Kadalasan, pag medyo nasa mukha mo na yung bola, you would use both of your hands to deflect that first ball. Overhand. This lead is down to three. Dreamline creeping back, but a service error de derails their run. Five service aces for the Blue Smashers against the single one. Pero babalasan na rin si Coach A. Kasilag and C will come in for the crossovers. What's the explanation for this in your opinion? Wedding blocking because mas matangkat si Kasilag, but it can also be uh, an, of an offensive um, substitution. They've got Adorador, Santiago, and Casilag. And there's the block from Casilag that produces the point. 
So, you called it. 2015. And that's what you were saying, no? She, she favored. <laughs> Veteran producing a point on a kill block. And a service ace, the second only. Para dito sa Cherry Tigo, it is Giselle C getting that one. To instant offense from the bench players. One from Casilag, one from C. And the lead is six. to love and cherry looking to come back here crawl back as they're up by six the biggest lead was seven for them she will continue to serve off the bench Arabella is putting her and Casila just in right now you can just see how important yung mga in-game decisions ng coaching staff sa pagpapaikot ng mga bench players nila they have been targeting Tots Carlos on the receiving end for the line he will get that point courtesy of that opposite hit. Four aces earlier. Eight para sa cream line. Four para sa cherry tigo. Hinabol na naman. Uy! It's still alive. It's still playable. Cha Cha getting it. You knew it was coming, Neil. So for the, for the blockers of green line, paunahin. You have to wait a little bit before you go up for that block. Para lang mapabagal mo yung bola. Which is really easier said than done. Yeah. <laughs> Shaya, who had a productive stint in the line earlier, is back there. Team has four aces. Make that five. So she takes her time. Locks on to the target. To the target. Sometimes confuses you, looks at one side, but goes the other. That's an aspect that she didn't have in college, Neil. She wasn't that great of a server back then in college. But again, she's a professional now. And she is delivering the goods. And more importantly, Neil, they are two points away from extending this to a fourth. Thoughts is out for Din Din. Down six. You know how Neil Morado um, gives it back to Thoughts Carlos. Para makabawi at magin mo confidence after those consecutive reception errors. So a six point lead for the crossovers. And Cells, he will go back to Jaja Santiago. The set point, and Cherry Tigo poised to extend game number one. As we said, they have proven that they have come back in, in games, come back in series. They have shown composure. Go to Eliza for the first ball. She gets it back. It is a net touch by Casila, which gives a point to Greenland. They save one set point here. Finally, nakuhan ng Cherry Tigo yung mga adjustments na hinahanap natin in the first two sets. They're blocking better, they're receiving better, serving better. Took a while for them to, to warm up. I wonder if that delay at the start of the game, you know, affected them. It could have been a factor. But again, this is not unfamiliar territory for the crossover. Right. What a set by Giselle C. Bumping it over to Dindin. And Dindin again converting on a massive swing. And the Cherry Tigo crossovers are still alive here in game number one.
back with you here on One Sports and One Sports Plus. And Jerry Digo stays alive and corrects a lot of their errors from set one and two, which is mostly receiving and the passing errors. And then they improve their, their blocking. And they got that good lead, Neil, which was around at seven, which is the largest one. So even when Creamline made a couple of runs, they were able to withstand it. They looked happier, they looked more confident. And this is uh, now a, uh, a real championship match. At the start of that third set, if I'm not mistaken, the 3 0 lead at the green line Dreamline. of the services Tama. of Gia Morado. Tama. But when the Cherry Tigo crossovers finally cracked the reception open for cream light, dun talaga sila nakakuha ng napakaraming puntos. Look at that, nine unforced errors. And you just sense the pressure given to the receivers of Creamline by the servers of Cherry Tigo. Seven unforced errors in set one for Cherry. Eight in the second, but only two. And this is an incredible number for a team like Cherry Tigo. So now they've tied it, 25-18. We have a game one, which will be extended to at least four set. Again, good evening to everybody watching and whatever platform you're watching on and whether you're watching us live or the replays on the YouTube channel of One Sports. So Reliance Studios of One Sports and One Sports Plus, Boom Gonzalez and Neil Flores. Ay Tensai is there in Ilocos Norte as Cherry Tigo and Creamline go at it again here in set four. And that is it. That's her 16th point of the ball game, followed by Eliza Valdez with 13, Jaja Santiago with 18 big points, and Manabas with 11. So the players we're expecting are the ones who are delivering thoughts. Eliza, a little bit of Gemma Calanza, and then on the other side, Santiago sisters are carrying the brunt of the offense. And look at the adjustment dun sa blocking ng Cherry Tigo. Hindi sila sumasagat dun sa antenna. They leave a short gap right. so that Gemma Galanza would be pressured Forced to challenge to, yeah. that line. Right, right. Oh, good reaction by Atienza. One all. Shia. Oh, this time she swung. No more rolling ball, no more offset. 2 1. Cherry Tigo. Choosing her angles well, going off the hands of Pots Carlos. Tama ka no, boom. Kanina, she was trying to go for the top spins, but it wasn't effective. And now, she's just putting in the power for Cherry Tigo. Ostero. Somebody touched the net, says second referee Mark Santos from the other side. Zaya disagrees. Call this me. Two off. Santo will serve. Cha Cha on the run and gun. 19 points. Rem is finally getting a stable position in that receiving end. Jaja has been all over that front line. She would go to the B quick, A quick, short running. Wala pa dyan yung back running. Yung long. This is the fifth straight day that they're playing, you know? Ito ang Cherry Tigo. After being out for three days, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Remember prior to that last elimination game between them and Choco Mucho. But since then, five straight days for them as Nabor denies Galanza the entry. Entry, rather. For two. Carlos puts it away. Nothing to get when you have a low reverse pass set. Mauhulit, mauhulit talaga yung middle blocker ng kalaban. Look at that. Jaja wasn't able to close the gap. And most of the time, nagagawa niya yun. Nakahabol niya yung wave ng kamay niya sa katabi. At that time. 17 points for Tots Carlos. 14 attacks. Puting again 
having issues with that one. This one's too short for Dindin. Rare that Dindin pushes from the back row. She usually will swing away. Maybe she didn't like the set. Panaga also has to get involved in the scoring picture for the Cool Smashers if they want to end it in full set. For all. This one's out. Good decision by both Dindin and Torrentes to part the C there. Five serving four, and Shia is back serving. Targeting Galanza, another great serve by Shia. The ball. Guess who they're going to go to? If I'm not mistaken, that was her 20th point of the ball game. So na yung room is here. Sa kanya din binigay yung bola. Running pa. Why not? When you're running at what 70, 75 percent efficiency, why not? And again, aided by a great serve by Shia earlier. Gia will open to Galanza. Cross court or targeting zone six. That space between them. And she knows she has to vary the attacks from the open. Keep on trying to go to that cross court. Sharp angles. Five will be serving six here. Could get there by Gemma. Eliza Puding keeps it up. Safely to the other side. Palik kay Baldo. Pat. Puding. Jaja. Touch from the back. Underneath. As she saw two established blockers already, kaya hindi niya pwedeng ibaon yung palo na yun. It was a good idea for Todd Scarlett to go over the block, but it wasn't the best execution. Now, Jerry Tigo has a two-point lead, looking to still stay alive in this game, one of the finals, and extend and challenge the Pool Smashers to a fifth set. Look at the numbers, monster numbers for Jaja Santiago. As expected, the superstars playing like superstars in the finals. That's one of them. on that cross court attack. Underhand. Between Estero and Nabor. Panaga will serve. Behind by one. Shia receives Ostero on the slip and slide. Played so well from the semifinals to game number one. The lead still with Cherry Tigo. Scoring 19 points last game, Dindin Santiago Manabat of the Cherry Tigo crossover said that she's treating every game like it's a championship game. Dahil pro league na daw to, kailangan lagyan ng focus, disciplina, at mental preparedness ang lahat ng ginagawa. More than that, pinagkatrabuhan daw nila ang kanilang service receive, transition, free ball, at setter spiker communication on the technical side. Let's see if tuloy-tuloy na ang pagbawi ng crossovers in this set. Well, yung service received na yan ay uh, nag-improve talaga in set number three. 
At uh, hinahanap nila na magpatuloy dito sa four. Puting working hard. Bad, not good enough, but it's still with them. Ostero, great reaction by Atienza. Good rally here. Thoughts from behind. Nabor opens up to Dindin. Too wide, too long for Dindin. A good rally. And the lead is down to one. Definitely a miss hit yeah. from Dindin Santiago Manabat. Put in a lap in a bayani at the end. Lead is one. Again, back to Buding. Whoa, does that hit the line? Yes, it does. That's the first time they went to a double quick attack. I was about to say, I haven't seen that. Today, at least. Well, you're still down by a single set, so if you can pull those plays out of your book, now is the time to do that. So they have the players to do it too, Gil. It's good, good for a serve, or good serve, rather. I did did Santiago, that is her 20th ace of the tournament. She is number two in terms of serving of all the players remaining in the, the final four. She is number two. Look at that line. 14 points built off 13 attacks and one ace for Dindin Santiago Manahabat. Puding, Napor. Miscommunication between her and Ostero. Sato, ang ganda ng sungkit ni Napor, which ends up with a bad hit. And the Ostero point, will they allow it? That will be an overreaching violation called on Ostero. They're clearly not happy, but it looked like a valid call. Let's take a look at that one again. Oh yeah, yung bola na sa court pa ng cream line. That's a good call from the first referee. Sharp, Lumer Pajarillo, our first referee. Did it again. The lead is two. De Jesus, miss set. Oh, and it still ends up as a point. That's the thing, when you go up for a block, you don't think about the balls behind you already because the defender is there to support you. But in this sequence, look at this. Medyo nag-alangan si Ostero, biglang kinuha niya eh. So Doremdes wasn't able to save that ball. Sira yung timing ni Doremdes. Sinungkit niya. Lead is down to one. Pinabawi. But Morado was there. Chance ball. Bad. And a convincing strike from Miley Bad to keep the lead at two. They need more of that from Paat. Nice back set. Sorry, Neil. Go ahead. It's okay, look at that. Going. Gia really chasing that one. Another chance here for the board to open up to Shia. And Shia scores for a three point lead. Everybody getting involved in the scoring picture for Cherry Eagle. That's what you want if you're Coach Aaron. Right at the corner in zone one. Shia playing well. And so is this girl. Off the bench. Now, Pinanganap na ibalik si Ortiz. Which is what happened in games two and three. Of the semifinals. That's a good legal ball. Back to Dots. Single block. Too much power. But Carlos continuing to pound on the defense of Cherry Eagle. Going against Chaya Garador. Ten serving 12. Oh! Baby did. That was too low for Bahad. Down to one, Sato serving.
Buding chasing his Nabor. Galanza, we haven't heard from her. And she squeezes it between the blockers. Ties the match at 12. Gemma Galanza swinging hard. Look at that extension. Yeah, perfect. Basta magkaroon ng maliit na gap dun sa double block ng Cherry Tigo. Creamline always finds a way to get through it. Kaya pinasok na si Elaine Casilag who had an impact earlier. One-handed set from Nabor saving that play. Transition to that Jaja Santiago. Be quick. Deserves a second look. <laughs> a scorcher from Jaja. Kasilak serving 13-12. Right now, Jaja has 18 attack points of 27 attempts. And again, Galanza finds the line. Perfect. <laughs> Sabi nga niya, nahanap niya na yung strike niya in the set. What a form. What a form. And in all of the hits nitong uh, Gemma Galanza, parang hindi na babawasan yung power. It's the same every time she goes up. But they give away an unforced error of the Cherry Eagles. Speaking of power, too much on that serve. Line also of thoughts. Amazing. Carlos, number eight now in scoring. And she climbed that quickly. <laughs> because again, she hasn't, she wasn't playing as much at the start of the tournament. They had 22 points in their previous game. 20 points so far in this one. All right. Nabor will bump it. And another score by Tintin Santiago. And that makes it 15 13. It's her turn to challenge the block of the center of green line. Morado is the one who could not contain. That spike. Oh, what a what a good match here. The third and fourth set, really. Cherry Tigo showing composure, not panicking. That's low. And another good serve by Shaya Adorador. Three-point lead for the number two ranked team in the league. This is a best of three finals championship series between the Cherry Tigo crossovers, the Cream Line Cool Smashers, two sets to one for Mitch and the rest of the Cream Line Cool Smashers, but a three point lead in set four for Cherry Tigo, trying to force another set number five, something that Cream Line has experienced four times already here in this tournament, has won all of it. Jerry Tigo liking its chances right now. I haven't seen that today. Something that Eliza developed under Coach Tai in Ateneo. This is the perfect time for Eliza Valdez to come up big and score for the Green Line Blue Smashers. Joy Takorod, a one time player of the game also in this tournament. Cherry Tigo gets ready to receive. Puding has been working hard. And because she has been working hard, Jaja Santiago has been 
Kumbaga, sinusuplian yung magandang ipinapakita ni Buting dito sa sets 3 and 4. 19 attacks out of 28 attempts. Sheesh! <laughs> That's all I can say. And she now serves with a 3-point lead. Lisa Valdez finds a crack in that ball. She has been under the radar in some of their games, but she is built to perform in these types of situations. You know, come from behind, crucial games. Jan Makinala si Eliza Valdez. Two point lead. High ball. Din din. Papalita dito. Jaja. Din din. Gemma. Eliza, the superstars of the BBL. Giving everybody the entertainment that they deserve. On this Wednesday evening, game number one. And literally, he really saved the best for last. And this is a best of three series. Silag. It's good take. Good reaction by Shia. Palikay Dintin. Dintin just tips it over on the second attempt. Eliza. Apor was there. Buding. This time, kay Kasilag naman dinala. And a campfire on the side of Creedline. Didn't work for Shia Adorador a while ago, but it worked for Elaine Kasilag. On the right pin. Look at that. Rolling into the other side. Jerry Deagle ahead here. By four. It is 1915 on the side of Cherry Eagle. It is 2 1 on the side of Creamline in terms of sets. Boom Gonzalez, Neil Flores, happy to have you with us. Rachel Ostero, Elaine Casilag, all from the bench of Aaron Venice. Roll on the one two play. What I like about the Makanya ni Murado is nahahawa kanya talaga yung bola, lapat na lapat yung kamay niya. So she knows where to put saan ilalagay yung bola. It's a well calculated move. And it's always a sharp angle. Hirap ng habulin, ano? Good serve. Sends it up to Elaine. De Jesus digs. It's good coverage by Gia. Carlos. Moore looks at Tintin. And Tintin looks at an open spot. And they maintain the distance. Four point lead. Tintin continues to pour in the numbers for the crossovers. <laughs> Look at that reaction. Who wants it more now? And this tournament has been a marathon for all the teams, not just for our four competing teams in the final four. But now that we're down to the last one or two games after this one, hindi na nila papansin yung pagod because napakatas na ng stakes for this. Konti na lang eh, kumbaga, no? Now it's right at the end of the tunnel now for the PBL teams. As Carlos gets the point there, 17-20. This is not a done deal yet for Cherry Eagle. A lot of work still. Especially with that goal serving. Kasilag sa gitna! What a time to go to that quick attack. That's a risky thing to do, talking about uh, decision making in Jasmine Abor. But sometimes the higher the risk, the higher the reward. And, you know, Kasilag was up for it. She swung, she got a point, and a crucial one at that here. 21 17 puts a lot of pressure now. 
on the Green Line Cool Smashers and as the status serves. And the most important thing about that is they have finally unlocked that play. Ngayon, magkakaroon pa ng additional problem ang Cool Smashers na iisipin. Uh, option. Pero contestant jump pa rin. They tied at excellent receptions. 33 each for the crossovers and the Cool Smashers. This lead is only three though. Great attack by Eliza. Going to the left, Sato serving. Buding chasing. Adorador. Galanza. Asking for a check, none given. Flat ball from Gemma Galanza. So I'd say it out. Eh? So kawala rin ka spin, spin yung bola. Tunog pa lang, nung palo. Yun, yun, parang gano'n na nga. Flat is the word. Four point lead. Cherry is inching closer to tying this match. Dodge says, don't count us out yet. What power <laughs> does she have? Can you just hear yung pag-ricochet ng bola papasok dun sa blockers? Jaja Santiago was too far off the net. Which gave Todd Scarlett a huge allowance to put that in. Maniniguro si Coach Aaron. Timeout na kagad. Velez making sure 22 19, a very important stretch here, very important juncture of this match as Jerry is trying to force as set number five. This is as good as advertised, Neil. And so, the first you know, few moments, you saw the tightness of Jerry Tigo, they couldn't get into their game, but when they did, they're looking good. And nobody looking better on that side than Jaja Santiago. Okay, Jaja Santiago just varying her attacks. Feathery, buttery touch there, dip. That's what you get when you crack the defense open. Una, bibigyan mo sila ng maraming malalakas na palo, then suddenly you go for drop balls. Ngayon, manghula na ngayon. Yung cream line, kung anong unang position dapat for their defenders. Shia serving. Sinukit, Tintin, Adlibing, not good enough. Negrito opens up to Michelle. Puding, Nabor, who she will, she will choose, Jaja. Negrito was there, though. Another long rally. Puding will go to Tintin this time. Cross court, and they are at set point. Tintin and Santiago Manaba really want to go and challenge Greenline to a fifth setter. And it is Adorador who will serve for the set. And Coach Tai, classic fashion, will ice the server. Adorador, the third best server. Of the remaining players, the final four, is at number three. Adorador is armed with 18 aces here in the tournament. Make that 19. We are going into a set number five, game one. 
one of the finals between Cherry Eagle and Creamline here on One Sports. You're watching us live on One Sports and One Sports Plus. And it is game number one of the finals between the Greenlight Cool Smashers and the Cherry Eagle Crossovers. We did say that these are the two best teams, number one and two, and rightfully so. And Creamline taking the first two sets while Cherry Eagle bouncing back. And we did say, Neil, but they always, well, lately they've been showing that ability to come back, their composure, their non panic, and they did it again here. So they force a set five. Now, Creamline's unbeaten in sets, in, in uh, five setters, but we'll see. It is the finals. It's completely different. What are your thoughts on the numbers? They were able to clean their passes well, they were able to convert a lot on the transition plays. And yung game plan ng Cool Smashers to take one Santiago sister out of the equation actually didn't work in the third and fourth set because both of them were the most productive in scoring during those sets. Mapapantayan din natin dito, Neil. I don't know if you'll agree with me, but you know, Alisa Valdez in, uh, in five setters usually takes charge, but... Chaja Santiago on your screens looks very determined in her first PBL finals. Yeah, it will boil down to whoever wants it more. Interesting, because Cherry Tigo was the only one to beat the Cool Smashers in the eliminations on the other side. Wala pang natatalo itong Cool Smashers sa five setters. So again, it can be anybody's ball definitely, game at this point. Definitely. Three five setters na sunud sunud nga yung kanila pinagdaanan bago nila tinalo ang Petrogas in three sets the last time out. Wala well, to namang uh, Cherry Tigo has won six of their last seven matches, including the last two three setters in the semifinal. So here we go. Kung nagahapunan kayo, if you're having dinner with us, thank you very much. Over 120,000 online. Wala pa yung on TV. But online, our viewers, maganda gabi sa inyong lahat. And thank you very much for tuning in to the first championship series of the first and only professional body, volleyball league in the country. And Cherry taking the first point. We will expect the top gun to ask for the ball intentionally, talking about the crossovers and the pool smashers. Santiago sisters, then you have Eliza Valdez, Cox Carlos and Gemma Galanza will be taking the reins on offense. So, Fati Bayan na lang din talaga to ng defensa. What did I say, though? Five sets. Valdez and Santiago. Yan ang mga pangalan na abangan natin in this uh, fifth setter. Valdez goes back to serve. Puding. Broken play. Gia 
will choose thoughts. Thoughts will choose to find a spot in the middle. That's how this game started. Remember, Neil, that's, that's how Thoughts was attacking in the first set. She has been the star of the Green Line Two Smashers in what, in the past two to three games, exploding for more than 20 points per game. We also have Eliza Valdez with 18 attacks so far. Casila. Ganadza. Tidbit will send it over to Shia. Shia will tip it to the other side. And nobody touched it. So that's a three points for Greenline. Remember, 15th. First to 15. Coach Aaron Dennis. Quick start for the pre like cool smashers, Neil. So far, they're serving well. Attacking well also. A point for Eliza. A point for Tots. Kasilag. We try to go to that same play. Yung nga lang medyo mababa na yung contact ni Kasilag on that quick hit. Three-point lead. Let's see what Coach Allen Aaron's going to do. If he's going to stay with the lane or bring back my lead pad. Instead already to receive, but it goes to Bading. They open up to Shia. Shia is rejected at the net. And a quick 5-1 start by the Cream Light Cool Smashers. They're used to playing five sets. They know what to do. They know how to establish their lead early on. It's a good point. And the Kasilak experiment is now taken out by Coach Aaron. Now again, Cherry, very good at coming back. Can they do it here? The most important thing for the crossovers right now is mapaikot mo si Jaja sa harapan. So... Then the need to score off the back row kung may hirapan yung attacker sa harap. And another timeout by Coach Aaron Velez. It is a five-point lead by Cream Line. They say in five setters, it's really that start that matters. And, uh, the old uh, saying, a pati bayan ng bibib. Pagdating din sa mga five setters, a lot of mental components. And because Dreamline has done it all and seen it all in five sets, they, don't, uh, they usually get into these hot starts. Shia Dorador, finally. Stopping the bleeding. So talino lang talaga maglaro ni Shaya Adorador. Again, identifying yung mga open areas sa defense ng cream line. But don't look now. Jaja Santiago is finally in the front row for the crossovers. The deficit is four. Carlos scores again. Will the deficit hold till the end? As Coach Aaron Dennis has burned two timeouts already. You cannot just simply exchange points. Ngayon, mathematically speaking, kailangan at least two is the one or three is the one at that. Nabor. Proporcento na si Nabor. Maximize Chacha Santiago while she's in front. 
even in their previous game, yung mga times na si Doremdes yung mapo-force na mag-set, she would still give it to Jaja on the differential. Look at that triple block. I didn't even notice that, Neil, at the first run. Going through a triple block. That's out. And the pure power of the former Lady Maroon. What a pride for the for D-line. Another spinning set by Gia Morano. It is 8-3. Chacha again. Pinatat ng blocker na ng clean line na si Chacha Santiago, but still, Chacha hitting it above. I love the look in her eye. She looks like she's so determined to just put it away every time they go to her. Now this is not done. We're halfway through. Four serving eight. Gemma targeted there. Puding recovers. Cha Cha again. This one is out. Boy, they got lucky. They dodged the bullet there. Too much angle for Jaja Santiago. It was the right intention to go for that cross court hit. Pero dahil nga siguro nakita niya na mag-isa lang si Risa Sato overshoots that mark. Now, Green Line has a five-point lead in this fifth set against the crossovers. What the production of the players today and an ace courtesy of Gemma Galanza. That is... Ace number 18 in the tournament for her. 17 points for Gemma Galanza. And a commanding six-point lead. Totally out of system and a chance ball. That could have been out, but Tessus takes it anyway. Puding keeps it in play. The ball will go to Dindin. Dindin with a rocket, but it's still alive. Jasmine the ball for the one-two. Back to Dindin. Up the Lunud. Sato was not ready for that set. She tried to reach for it. Kinapos yung talon. That was probably the longest rally that we had so far in this game. What a spectacular exchange by both teams, but it is Cherry Tigo winning in that one, and that would have been crucial. And now, Jaja is behind. 25 points, five point deficit. Make that six as Eliza Valdez puts it away. And yeah, when you need her the most, you just dial her number and she will score. Or you were talking about the guys about this. Sinani Jajay, Bubi Pira talaga dito. Thoughts, of course. Pero kulang na kulang. Para si Cherry dito sa fifth set. Six point lead. Ostero. Piniti ng konte. But gets the point anyway. Directs the ball to the left side. Which tie asking for a violation, not given. Five points. Oh, that's crucial. That is expensive on the part of Cherry Eagle. That is crucial. What a time to commit a service error. More bad news as Morado is the one serving on the other side with a six-point lead. Napor to Dindin, set back, Puding. Free ball. Carlos blocked. Open to Eliza. Eliza puts it away. Yes, 
Not afraid to challenge the double block. And that was against Dindin Santiago Manaba, the taller blocker of the two. She's not afraid of the moment period, as always, as she's proven years and years. The lead is seven after two incredible sets by Cherry Hino. They're faltering here in set five under the pressure of the Creedline Cool Smashers. Now at match point 14 6. Chia delivers one. The board. Bat. And a chance here for Cream Line. They go back to the well. That is why. Yes, it is. Quite by the Cherry Tigo. Saving one match point. Din Din. Seven serving 14. Gia. And they go in the middle to Eliza Valdez, who uncorks another one and delivers another fifth set win. And more importantly, game number one of the championship series of the Premier Volleyball League. That's one of the few times Gia Morado went to that combination play from the middle. And Eliza Valdez made sure that they get this game one. So congratulations to the Green Line Pool Smashers. The queen of five sets and the queen of the fifth set, time and time again. Cherry Tigo with an incredible fight back in sets three and four, but that start in set number five, that was the big one. We'll take a break and we'll be back to wrap this baby up. That is the fifth five-set match that the Creamline Cool Smashers have gone through here in this uh, open conference of the Premier Volleyball League. And the one who always delivers the goods, especially in crunch time, is Eliza Valdez, our player of the game with Ait inside. With 21 points, here with me is player of the game, no other than team captain of the Creamline Cool Smashers, Eliza Valdez. Eliza, given the fourth set, how did you regroup, regain your composure para makabawi kayo to end that with a great finish? Well, Coach Ty would always say na 0-0. Zero, zero. We have to always start na parang new set. And <laughs> so, yun lang yung mindset namin and we really gave it all during the fifth set. Yes, and how do you and your teammates feel that you are one step closer to regaining your title as champion? Well, we're really happy, but alam mo, this is hindi <laughs> matapos yung laban. This is siguro wala pa talaga, but we're gonna take it uh, from here. Yes. Pagbalik namin siguro sa sa hotel, we're gonna restart, refocus, and uh, prepare for the for our next game. Okay. Yes, happy birthday, EK. Do you want to greet your fans and your loved ones, Eliza? Yeah. To my parents, uh, Ruel and Lita, hello, Nay and Tai. And to my, uh, sa mga kapatid ko, hello, to Yosef, hi. And sa families po ng teammates ko, Eman, hi, and EK, okay. And uh, sa lahat po ng fans na nanonood, and uh, marami.
dadasal po para sa aming lahat, sa safety po na lahat, maraming salamat. And let's all pray for Maddy also para yes. sa, sa fast healing niya. Yan. Congratulations, Eliza, and expect more thrilling volleyball action here for tomorrow's games. Thank you, Yay! Thank you, Ian. Congratulations to Eliza Valdez. There were so many, as we're gonna go through all the set highlights, and we'll explain through it for those who tuned in late, but there were so many great individual performances here on both sides, and we'll go through that in a bit. Let's go back to set number one, and Neil, take us through what happened through the five sets. You no, know, when we started this ball game, Dreamline just really entered this guns blazing. They served really hard. Yeah. Na feel ng Cherry Tigo yung pressure. They weren't as calm and relaxed as they were in the fourth and fifth sets. And that was the storyline for the first two sets for Dreamline. These are scenes from that set number one. As we mentioned in set number one, Cherry looked tight. And uh, remember, we were delayed by at least 30 minutes because of a uniform issue. And we wonder, we will never know, we wonder if that had something to do with them starting a little slow and starting tight. Set two was more of the same, maybe even worse, no? Talagang pinakpakan sila ng service. Reception was a problem. If not for Dindin and Jaja and some of those nice sets by the board, that probably would be even bigger in your lead and your uh, final tally in sets one and two. In set two, Gemma Galanza and Tots Carlos really took charge in the offense. That's why it's also hard to pick just one player of the game. Mahirap talaga. Kasi ang daming deserving, but again, Eliza Valdez, um, very steady in this ball game, not just in scoring, but also in the non-scoring skills. So, happy, happy. Ang cream line dahil naka 2-0 sila dito. And then we said at the start of set 3, do not underestimate Cherry Tigo all throughout the tournament, even in the semifinals. As recently as the semifinals, they've shown character, composure, and they've shown that they can come back. And that's what they did in set number 3. Paliktad naman yung nangyari. Yung talagang reception naman ng cream line ang nagsakit. Yeah, set number three, Jaja Santiago had a lot of great sets from Jasmine Abor as, as well as Dindin Santiago Manabat. They were able to take a lot of players out of the system dito sa Cream Line Pool Smashers. And it was just a dominant win yeah. in that set number three dahil mas marami ring errors ang nakumit ang Cream Line. Tama. And again, the Santiago sisters delivered on cue. Set four, they look not only dominant, but they look confident. And even the other players now got into to play. No, Shaya played well. Mylene had her spurts. Elaine Casila, Giselle C, Pinasok, at Gumua. And of course, the Ostero din. Yeah, if uh, we get to check at the final stat sheet later on, right now, you see Cherry Tigo challenging Creamline to a five-setter na hindi pa full potential yung scoring capacity ng iba nilang players. Right. What more in game to if they are able to make those adjustments? But in that set four, like what you said, boom, they were just confident. They were rolling, they were cruising, and they even saw new plays from the book of Jasmine Abor. All right. And then, set number five was all about the start. 5-1, if I'm not mistaken. 7-2, and uh, they never looked back. Yeah, for cream line, it's well, looking at their past games, mahirap kasing kalaban yung cream line sa fifth set. Why? Because they have a lot of fire power to burst your defense sa simula pa lang. And if they manage to establish an early five, six point lead, you bet that they will continue that to the 15th point. And they have a lot of fire power, but they also have arguably, or whatever, the best finisher of the game. Eliza Valdez is clutch. She said this season that she was just going to pick her spots, let her teammates do a lot of the heavy lifting, and do uh, deliver when she is needed. And that's exactly what she does during the five sets. So, that's it for game number one, and that's it for day one of the best of three of both our uh, battle for third and our championship round. And tomorrow, papalik po uli tayo at 2 o'clock. And again, we say a prayer for Maddie Madayag and her injury as her team will go back into action against Petrogas Angels who are looking for that uh, third place with a win tomorrow. While Jerry Tigo looking to extend this into a winner take all if they win tomorrow or Cream Line will take it all in this inaugural professional season of your Premier Volleyball League. For Neil Flores, I'm Boom Gonzalez. Thank you and good night.
from One Sports and One Sports Plus.